Hi right, everybody, happy Friday. Welcome to the Dog House on Microbrew Radio. It's great to be back. Uh, we've been away a little while um, since sort of lockdown eased, uh, sort of the music that people were making during lockdown and just before started to dry up. So we took some time away. But one thing we want to do this Friday is catch up with a band that have really been doing some crazy things, great gigs, and uh, and they've had some new releases. So it's great to welcome back Will and Joe from Marseille. How are you doing, guys? Hello. Hey up. Hey you up. Uh, <laughs> I didn't think you were going to say anything then, Will. Uh, it's great to have you back on the show, mate. Um, for viewers, I mean, we've you you guys have been in a couple of times uh, during lockdown, really, and right at the early part of uh, 2021. Uh, probably mm. February, March time, uh, we had a chat with you. Uh, at that point, brand new band, sort of formed over lockdown. Uh, Will, you met the drummer, uh, Sam, open mic, I remember that, and um, just before lockdown, and then during lockdown, you put you got together as a, a three-piece, and I believe you're now a four-piece. Yes, right. we are now a four-piece. So where's the addition? Who's where's the addition? Ellie. Ellie. Ah, yeah. Absolutely. Basically, Ellie joined through Sam because we used Ellie's studio the whole time and she helped Sam with recording a lot of the time. And in the end, she ended up filling in on bass a lot of the time when we were playing live. Yeah. And that's just, it felt natural. It wasn't really something where we were like, oh, Ellie, do you want to join us live? It sort of just happened. And she ended up joining permanently. Well, I've been fortunate enough to see you guys live, and uh, she's a great addition to the band. So, uh, fantastic sound, full sound. Um, right, okay. So, we spoke probably February this year. In March, you released a uh, debut. Um, that's probably got over 50,000 streams on Spotify. I've not looked for a bit. I'll have a look. Uh, it's really exploded <laughs> as a release called World's Gone Mad. Um, Will, you wrote that song. Do you want to tell us a little bit about it? Because the timing was pretty perfect after after going yeah. through lockdown. Hang on, I'm just going to find out how many how many listens it's got. World's <laughs> gone mad. I reckon it's still near forty thousand. I reckon. Yeah, hey, I've, I've a big deal. Uh, it's pretty it's impressive, pretty though. It's pretty mm. impressive. Uh, Thirty-eight thousand and a oh, half. I did big it up a little bit, but anyway, mm. uh, yeah, should have fifty thousand. Yeah, yeah, I, I, you know, that's pretty impressive, that is, pretty impressive. Um, tell me about the song, Will. Basically, it was just written as originally just a crack at having a song with Sam and stuff. Because we were going to the studio and we needed a song to put on a radio station that asked us whether we wanted any music played. And I was like, I've got none. So I went to Sam and just like, we need to record a song quick. And World's Gone Mad was written in like a day. Um, and I went to Sam and showed it in. And then we just recorded it. But it was written about lockdown. Because the world was really going mad at that time. And I felt like we needed to get it out as soon as possible. Because it, whilst it was relevant, the world is still mad to an extent. It is still mad. Say, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, it still is. And I know you recorded that um, probably the a few others during that sort of after the first lockdown before the, the one pre-Christmas. So you had a bit of studio time uh, to put down some tracks. Is that right? Yeah, we had a quite a bit. We had loads of time on our hands because um, all none of us were in school or anything at that time because uh, obviously COVID. I don't think Sam had a job at the time either. So we we're always just plugging away, doing what we could. And it was yeah. good times, good times. I think it's incredible, an incredible to put a single out when you're 15 years of age is absolutely uh, fantastic. You've got to really got to be proud of that one. But something else I want to ask you about is the branding. So you've got a really cool uh, branding logo. Um, you've got the letter M, um, a link to Derbyshire, I think. Is that Derbyshire flag colours? Derbyshire rose, um, yeah. And all, all the designs you see. And... Um, all the effects and so on are all done by Carl Shaw, who has his own brand called Mr. Shaw, which everyone else should check out for quality clothes and etc. cetera. So that, that's a massive part um, of our band and brand. And uh, yeah, I can't thank Carl enough for that, really. It's amazing. Yeah, it's very, it's very striking. Uh, you know, when you, on social medias and things like that, it, 
it stands out. It's absolutely fantastic. And it's, it's you know, it's a part of something that if you've got a good brand, you've got a good product, people start to listen to you. And I think, um, was it May time, second release? Was it May or late April, Will? It was May. It was May 21st. Shout out loud. Shout, got shout these, out loud. All these dates stored up in my head. And um, that that's kind of uh, not completely different to World's Gone Mad, but it's just... It's, it's basically it's in your face. It's full on, sort of. It shows a different face. side to the band. Absolutely, I think all three songs do that really. Yeah, they I, do. I like that. I believe they do. Let's take a, a, a listen to a, a live session. Uh, it, was this on the Dog House previous, or is it just something you'd recorded? Yeah, it was for the Dog House. I remember yeah, we recorded these at Christmas time last year. Yeah. So yeah. this is this is uh, Marseille shouting that loud. Hi, we're Marseille, live in the studio. I've enjoyed this song, it's called Shout Out Loud.
last track uh, was Shout It Out Loud, the band's second single. What a track. That, that, for me, that's, you know, echoes 90s uh, indie. Obviously, Oasis, very strong influence there. But that, that could have been on Definitely Maybe, that track. Mm. Yeah, that kind it's, of... a bit, it's a bit more updated now, that track. When we play it live, we've got a few little extra additions to it. So it's even better live. So you should all come and see us. It's yes. Yes. <laughs> And then when that track track came out, the uh, Twitter, you see the kind of band exploded on Twitter, who trend in. Uh, there's a lot yeah. of radio play off the back of that, I think, on, on the internet radio in particular. Mm. Yeah, that track, track of the was week. really well received. Yeah. Um, it's sort of the band that pushed us and put cemented ourselves as a new band that is really up and coming and is going places. And sort of think- cemented that image in people's eyes. Absolutely. Joe, I think Joe was just about to mention, was that a record of BBC Introducing? That was track of the week on a BBC Introducing, so like all over the... And, and this and feeling. This yeah, feeling, as well. yeah, good Got point. That was, uh, yeah, this feeling picked up on that song and uh, I think you've already played, is it Rough Trade for this feeling? Yeah, we played that supporting Fever, which was a good experience. Bit of a shame that we were the first band on. But hopefully we won't be going into the future because we we'll, we were better. Okay. I think <laughs> we'll be headlining. There you headlining. go. There you go. You've got another This Feeling show coming up in November next month as well, haven't you? Yeah, that's at Sydney and Matilda in Sheffield with Rats. 18th of November, that one. That one's going to be good. Cool. We've played over in Sheffield a few times as well. Northern Exposure, we did that, obviously. The PR for Shout Out Loud and everything like that. And we also played a festival uh, with Sharp Class. Uh, I can't remember when that was. It's like July time, June, July. No, I think that was August, mate. I think that was mid, late August. Yeah, you're probably right. So many am- still get muddled up now. So you guys must have started gigging, uh, I don't know, spring? Uh, from, from May, from May onwards, really. We've been in quite late, a busy yeah. band. How many gigs yeah, have yeah. you done? You're right. Off loads. Yeah, gigs. How many gigs? Yeah. I would say about 25 off the top yeah. of my head. I'm not sure whether more. But um, I remember the first gig we played was the day after Shout Out Loud came out. Mm. I do remember that. Yeah, I think it just feels like a lot more because some of them were like really cramped together, which isn't always the easiest thing. <laughs> but um, an enjoyable experience nonetheless, so. So when you were with us earlier in the year, you spoke about your influences, uh, Oasis, Stone Roses, things like that. And these these bands definitely come across in in your music. It's not all you're not all stuck in the nineties. I get that. You know, there's modern twists uh, and and lyrics um, to your songs. But um, so those bands rooted in the nineties. Uh, but what about now? What's what sort of bands are lighting you up right now at the moment? The music scene. Uh, Will first. Uh, there's quite a few. Like even back then, there was always DMAs and Lathams like that who have massively blown up recently. Lathams have, and there's even some that are emerging that I just think are great. And I've seen them live a few times. Like Affleck Palace and Pastel are brilliant. Two ones really to watch out for. Cool, Joe. I think there's there's not too much I can add to that. I mean, Will is right with Affleck Palace and Pastel. Everyone needs to definitely keep an eye out. I reckon. They're going to be one of the next big things. So those two, yeah, you can have the Lathams, but I'd say keep your eye on Pastel and Affleck's Palace. A bit underground at the minute, but they'll they'll emerge. Cool. So. There's, uh, there's evidence with bands like, uh, well, Lathams, for a perfect example, Snuts as well. You know, they're kind of, beginning of the year, nobody really twigged onto, onto them, but it just goes to show that, you know, if you've got the quality... Uh, you'll you'll shine through, yeah, definitely shine through. So, you, how do you think about the sort of gig situation post COVID? Is 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 there opportunity there, or you'll find? Seems like everybody's on tour at the minute. Yeah, I'd say at first it's a bit difficult because uh, as a new emerging band, a lot of people are booking the people they know. Oh no, are good, and they us they'd never seen us, and they obviously weren't very confident on just getting some sixteen year olds in to play a pub gig or whatever and they shows because first they sort of trickled in but as soon as people 
got the word of mouth that we were good, they all came flooding in. Like everyone was after us. We had about twenty five gigs. Pretty Quite good, right. but I think it's gone back to normal now. It's not completely back to normal, obviously, but most of it has gone back to the way it was. Yeah, I was at a venue last night, 500 people in there, so in Derby. So, you know, um, yeah, it's great. That was Leyland's, incidentally. So, it was, you know, you've, who I know you've seen. Um, yeah, they were great. It was great to see that many people in, in sort of an East Midlands uh, venue. It's pretty cool to be yeah. fair. So, when are you going to play in Burton on Trent? I know we are. We are Saturday, aren't we? You are, yeah. We're so, the show there. goes out on Friday night. You're going to play there. Where are you playing, mate? The Wiggy, the Wiggiston. Awesome, great pub. Uh, have some great bands on there, local. So you're going to be at the Wiggiston on uh, what's that, thirtieth of uh, 31st. October? So that's all. Thirty first. Thirty first. That's Halloween. No, Eve. it might be the thirtieth. Yeah, no, it's you're right. It's the thirtieth. Yeah, don't turn up on thirty first. It'll be Sunday. <laughs> there won't be a band on. But uh... they do want us to. They want us to go in Halloween outfits, Ooh. which um, yeah, it's not happening. We'll go to Squid Games. <laughs> Again, yeah, but the audience can, can, you know, get into the spirit. Um, mm. literally, uh, so I know you played there previously as well. So how did that go? What was your last experience like down there? That was a oh, that was actually a really good gig. I really enjoyed that. Um, a good crowd. We had people dancing. At one point, at the end of the show, when we do an encore, I hopped on drums. It was just a really nice chilled night and I think that is probably one of the best we played even though I broke two strings oh, did you have any spares spare guitar I saved, we'll I had saved spares today, which was very lucky which I never usually carry and they ended up going on Joe's guitar so it was obviously meant to be a good gig brilliant so uh, this show's going out Friday we're only a couple of days from that Saturday um, obviously you're playing in Burton on Trent which is absolutely fantastic so get down there it's free entry it's normally nine o'clock when bands kick off the wiggy, half eight, nine o'clock. Yeah. So. yeah, yeah. Uh, but also on the yesterday, which is tomorrow, I'm getting confused now, but anyway, <laughs> um, you're at the venue. What's yeah, that? How, about? How, did, how did that come about? Will? Who wants to have a go at that one? <laughs> oh, go on, I'll let you have a go, Will. Cheers. <laughs> uh, basically, with the Sherlock's whole thing, they announced the Grassroots Tour, which was something we didn't really think much of at first until they said, comment who you think you should support. And we saw Derby were obviously in the tour list and loads of people for the Derby gig commented us since we were like a new emerging band. And it was just something fresh and new a lot of people in the comments all spammed it with Marseille and about 70% of people from Derby said that we should support, which was brilliant because next thing you know, you all got messages from Michael Crook, the guitarist of the Sherlock's <laughs> saying, Oh, we've heard about, about you guys. Do you want to support in Derby? And it's like, yes, please. Like, let's do that. Brilliant. And that's a combination of we're in, obviously at that point, probably you've got the two singles out. You've got a great brand, a great band and uh, caught the eye. So that's absolutely fantastic. And people power. So excellent. As you say, uh, your reputation's uh, growing. You're getting stronger and stronger. What What's sort of going forward? We've mentioned sort of shows into November. Uh, you've got some stuff booked in the new year. Uh, you mentioned that. But what do you want 2022 to be for you guys? I think 2022 is obviously going to be uh, more releases, more music out there, so you can all stay tuned for that because y you wouldn't want to miss it, honestly. Um, yeah, hopefully we can grow a fan base more in 2022. We can expand and push out to areas such as Manchester. Um, yeah, so just opportunities like that, really. They they'd be great. Just taking it What's slow, that? but big. Big. I wouldn't just say Manchester, as in like just stretch it out. I'd say all across the UK, really. I think it's 22, 2022 is just going to be the year where we take the step up from pubs. They're gone. <laughs> oh, dude. So, yeah. Well, no, I don't know. I can't say that they'll be gone. But hopefully uh, we would have gotten to the point where we can play like places like Rough Trade and stuff on our own and have support acts. Hopefully 
past halfway through 2022, we'll get to that stage. And we've got an EP ready to, well, not ready to go, but we've got it written and we just need to get it recorded now. And that's going to be good. I was just going to ask you about that. So new material, are you writing new material? So are you pleased with the, yes. what you've got? Yeah, yeah, yeah it sounded good. The album we've actually got written, we've tried to avoid releasing as many tracks off that as possible because we want it to be like a nice surprise. We want at least about six tracks to be unheard when it drops. Otherwise, the actual anticipation has gone. <laughs> so we're trying to stay away from the songs on there, but we've written a fully new EP and it's great. And I think it's one to keep your eye out for. Mm. Excellent. Thanks for that. Thanks for that. Uh, right. Okay. So um, the brand new single, well, the new single, it's been out a little while, probably about five or six weeks. Um, again, it's, uh, it's a really strong track and um, it's, it's been all over the internet, all over the socials. Uh, I know it's been played on sort of BBC Introducing, it's picked that one up again uh, as well. Um, who Will, I guess you wrote it. What's it about? It's about being kicked out of your last band. <laughs> not no it's not about that specifically but it's just when people get you down and stuff it's your time to prove them wrong you'll come back stronger than like what what you used to be as it says you'll come back better than you ever were because all you can do in life is improve upon yourself and that song says it that's a great thing to believe in and uh you, you actually can you know what i mean so uh you have the power guys 100 percent there's a great guitar riff in that song joe it's pretty cool i know you both play guitars on that track but uh yeah it's a, it. it's a good <laughs> it's a good guitar song that is um influencer for the track so you drawing influences from well, i mean will wrote it he, he's the one who actually wrote that riff i just play it how but, did it come about yeah. then will that was like a weird moment because i picked up a guitar randomly at a guitar store and was like that's a nice guitar I might have a go on it pulled it down and just played that riff instantly and I was like whoa <laughs> where did that come from and uh, just wrote a song around it it had these chords already that weirdly fit and that song was inspired by like the Verve and the riff was inspired by the Stone Roses and stuff but when I had it and put it together I thought it had a bit of a lousy feel so the influences from that song probably are more like the Stone Roses, the Verve and the Lars, really. It's one of the songs that I'm more proud of and the lyrics are so meaningful as well. Yes, it is. It's, uh, it's, it's a great song. It's, it's kind of dreamy. It's got a great like, one minute sort of intro guitar band, you know, without the vocal and then it just comes in. Uh, it's proper. It's a great song. You can lose yourself in the first 60 minutes, you know, uh, to listening to its quality so uh will you might you might have wrote that riff but uh joe owns it yeah. he bosses it that's right <laughs> that's joe, too right, joe owns anything he plays <laughs> he does actually that's dead right that's dead right so um okay so you've got a brand new video out as well so the the video is a little bit behind the single um where, where was that filmed where, is it local that that um that single for that the video was filmed up at um where we record Ellie's Farm so everywhere you see that's uh, all Ellie's Farm and we all, we recorded it there which was it was a fun day really it was very hot um but we managed to do a lot of things all in one take I mean I think Sam tripped over a few times but um no it was a really fun day and uh, the result back is amazing I'm really pleased with it so. It's, it's all good. Excellent. Yeah. Well, listen, guys, it's been great having you on the doghouse again. Thanks for coming back and seeing us. Thank you. Uh, we're going to play out with uh, with State of Mind video. Um, mm. Yeah, best of luck for the future. Enjoy the gig uh, Saturday night at the Wiggy. Uh, what about socials? Uh, how can, just remind us, where can we find you on social media? Find us on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook. It's all Marseille Band and we'll come up. So type that in your search engines and give us a like or follow you got a youtube account as well oh yeah yeah i always forget about that yeah we've got a youtube channel also called marseille band or if you just type in marseille state of mind or any of our tracks it'll be on there so 
So there you go. Knock Check yourselves out. out. Yeah, spot. add another uh, stream to the Spotify count as well, that uh, 0.00003 or whatever it is you get out of it. Um, it's very <laughs> important. Um, yeah, yeah. Check, out, check out the band's songs. Like I say, three songs in the last, what, eight, nine months? Uh, phenomenal. Great work rate. Um, no one had really heard of you that much beginning of the year now. Yeah. All of these Midlands know who you are, particularly I'm further afield. Uh, they're getting to see you alive. You're getting out and about. So uh, keep going, lads. And uh, thanks for coming into the doghouse. Thanks for catching up. Hopefully we'll see you again in another uh, seven or eight months and uh, you'll you know, be on tour of the UK, something like that, playing to strong audiences. So this That's is excellent. State of Mind by Marseille. Uh, we'll be back in the doghouse uh, hopefully soon. And uh, hopefully you'll join us. So until then, take care. Thanks, Marseille. Have a great week. Oh, thank See you. you later. Take care. Bye bye. See you later. Bye.
see that.